it's very, very difficult to obtain a sample of pure phosphorus that is actually white. Expose it to any air for any length of time and you immediately get a yellow discoloration. If we go back to our discussion of the chemistry of various elements including carbon, then remember carbon and nitrogen very easily form multiple bonds and they form multiple bonds because they're small atoms and you have efficient overlap between the p orbitals. Now phosphorus is much larger and you don't get efficient overlap between the p orbitals. So normally there is no phosphorus-phosphorus multiple bonding. There are of course multiple bonds to smaller atoms where orbital overlap is more efficient but phosphorus does not normally form double bonds or multiple triple bonds with itself. P4 is a very very reactive molecule. It is pyrophoric. Now I deal with a lot of reagents in my chemical career which are volatile and pyrophoric. Phosphorus has a boiling point of 280 degrees centigrade. So it's not a liquid or a gas, so it's not that volatile, but it will burst into flames spontaneously in air if it's finely divided, or if you have a big lump, if you give it a little bit of heat to melt it on the surface to begin with. So phosphorus is genuinely pyrophoric, but is not the most dangerous reagent you ever find. What happens when you're having a sample of pyrophoric phosphorus. Well, P4 is a tetrahedral molecule. And when I say tetrahedral, I don't mean there's an atom in the middle and it coordinates to all four of these phosphoruses. I mean it's genuinely a tetrahedral molecule where the only atoms are at the vertices of a tetrahedron. So P4 is a tetrahedral molecule rather than a molecule with a central tetrahedral geometry. If you heat it to 1800 degrees centigrade, and only if you heat it to 1800 degrees centigrade, then that P4 tetrahedron breaks down and in the vapour phase you actually have something that is analogous to our N2 molecule, i.e. a P2 molecule which is formally triple bonded. But of course these bonds are not as strong as the bond, the efficiently overlapped bonds that are present in the nitrogen molecule. So there is a very high temperature allotrope of phosphorus which is P2, but it's not one that would normally interest us in chemistry. Other forms of phosphorus that you will have encountered include red phosphorus. Red phosphorus is a sort of polymeric network. So red phosphorus is not discrete molecules like P4, it is a polymeric network. And it has a certain degree of crystallinity to it, but there are also various variations on the theme of red phosphorus. And it has, it's pretty difficult to define precisely. Here we have something looking like a sample of red broccoli, that's solid red phosphorus. So it's a powder material with a three-dimensional network, an infinite three-dimensional network as opposed to these discrete molecules. Black phosphorus is described loosely as a single allotrope, but strictly there are actually many different forms of black phosphorus which could be defined as individual allotropes. And so it has again a polymeric layer-like structure. So there are some similarities, if you like, to graphite in the sense that Black phosphorus has a polymeric structure, it is an infinite structure, but it's arranged in layers rather than the three-dimensional structure associated with red phosphorus. The only allotrope of phosphorus one would really expect you to be familiar with and to be able to draw is P4.